no matter what you do in life, no matter where you go, no matter where you live, no matter how you dress, no matter how you conduct yourself, you will be judged according to your actions, your attitudes, your clothes you wear, the way you deal with stresses, the way you deal with life. Everything about you is always under a microscope and that's why so many people feel pressured today to be something they're not because they want to measure up to a standard that someone else has set for them. It doesn't matter who you are, you are trying to measure up to somebody's standard. And sadly, the opposite should be true. You should be as unique and as individual as God created you to be and should be the flower of His eye. You should be the beauty that God created you to be, as unique and distinctive a person as you can be and as you ought to be in relationship with God. Because that's how God wants you to be. Solely, completely, uniquely different than anyone else. Because He created you that way. That's what He made you to be. You are someone God loves. You are the apple of His eye. You are the person God chose to love and die for. Now, I can't think of anything more important than that. Now, maybe you like Prada. Maybe you have all 3,700 designer shoes that heels, spikes, all the different aspects and sandals and flats and, you know, lifters and women's shoes that there are. You know the names of all of them, and you can identify which ones are knockouts and which ones are real. But that doesn't matter, because the most important thing really is what will happen when you die and your shoes go on to be with someone else. Are they going to wind up in the secondhand store, or are you donating them to science? <laughs> so the reality of who we are isn't based upon what we look like. The reality of who we are isn't based upon whether we measured up to someone else's standard. The reality of who we are is how God created us. Because you aren't this flower. And as much as I like this flower, I like that one better. And there's nothing this flower can do to make me not like that one better. It can't grow purple. Sorry. It can't get bigger. Not since I cut it off. It can't do anything about the fact that it's just the way it is. But I like it for who it and what it is. A flower. A red and white flower that I happen to have enjoyed enough to cut off and allow the rest of the plant to grow and to bloom. But I like this flower too because as I take the time to smell it, it smells good. Now this flower could try to perfume itself. It could try to make itself into something it's not. But why would it do that? I wouldn't want it to be that. Because if it put perfume on that smelt like that flower, I'd be thinking of that flower. God looks at you and says, why are you changing yourself to be something you're not? I made you. I counted the very hairs on your head. I loved you as you are. And I am making you into someone you never dreamed you would be. What's wrong with you today? The problem is you're trying to measure up to somebody else's standard and not accepting the fact that God loves you the way you are. Those who believe that they can be acceptable to God without Jesus need to deal with some crucial questions. If they believe they can make it to heaven by achieving a certain level of goodness, great. Try it. See how that works out for you. What standard do they have to live up to? What standard are they going to set for God to accept them? After all, they're telling God what standard they want to measure up to. What will God require of them? So many say, I feel that I'm basically a kind and good person and am willing to stand before God on my own merit. I am willing to take my chances. I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to, you know what, I'm not so bad. You know, look at the other guy. I'm willing to compare myself to that other person and say, hey, check it. I don't do what they do. I'm not so wrong. Matter of fact, I try to be nice. I 
I think I'm a pretty good person. And a lot of people think they are. But these people fail to take into account that God's standards are different than our standards. You know, one of the most famous things I like to say is, hey, check it out. Man looks on the outward things. He's always measuring people by what they look like, by what they can accomplish, by what they do. But he's always looking at people and saying, you're, ooh, a fashion model because you're skinny. Is that really a measurement of what a fashion model looks like? Would you put a skinny model into a different setting where you were selling oversized uniforms or clothing or nightwear? Of course not. You see, individuals fit in different settings for different purposes and different designs. But when you take that person out of that customized design, they no longer fit for that purpose. That's the uniqueness of what God has done. Man looks on the outward signs. God looks on the heart. Man wants to make things fit in places where they do not fit. God says, I have a standard that fits all. Jesus showed us God's requirement for those who would strive for heaven on their own power when he said, be perfect. You know, perfect. Absolutely no flaws, flawless, perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Straight up. Just be, be as God. Be perfect. No problem. Right? Houston, we got a problem. You're not perfect, and I'm certainly not perfect. So I'm not going to put some standard of perfection on you that I can't measure up to. So I can't claim to tell you to be perfect, because I know that I'm not. But can Jesus... Uh oh. Uh oh. Did Jesus just say, be perfect because he's perfect also? Or do we know enough about Jesus to realize that since he was perfect, and he lived a perfect life, and he died obeying the Father, perfection is the standard? Uh oh. So, what standard can we set? Well, Let's set our own standard, shall we? You know, I'm not as perfect as Jesus, so I'll just make my standard a little bit less than perfect. But Jesus said, be perfect. You see, Jesus is suddenly laying down the law, and we're not measuring up to it, are we? Oh, I know that if you're a man, you think you're perfect, but trust me, once you get married, your wife will tell you all your faults. She knows you're not perfect. She married you anyways. But these people fail to take into account that God's standards aren't ours and God sets the standard. Jesus as the Son of God set the standard. The standard for the person who wants to be right with God is nothing short of absolute perfection. Not just trying hard or being sincere, but a flawless keeping of all God ever intended for man. Clearly those who believe they can earn eternal life by their good works have a distorted understanding of the holiness of God and what it means to be right with God. You see, when I want to be part of a crowd, I dress like the crowd. When I want to fit in, I dress and act like the group and fit in. I become part of that fitting in process, that kind of like, you know, let's make it work together, you know, cooperation thing. You know, if I want to be part of the hood, I wear my hoodie. If I want to be part of the gang, hey, you know what, I get my tats, I get my guns, you know, I get my attitude, hey, you know, and I got it. But if I want to be me, then how do I measure up to the standard that I am? What if I just want to be me, just the way I am, and accept it, just as I am? Suddenly, there's a whole different problem here. You see, when people have a standard they want you to measure up to, then they force you into changing who you are because they don't like you the way you are. They don't accept you as you are. They don't want you to be you. They want you to be like their standard. And you measure up to it. And you strive and you try and you work it. And you do what you can to get it, don't you? But that's not what 
we are, is it, when we live by grace? That's not what God has said when we are studying the aspect of grace. That's not what God has done when he's given us grace. Because without that measurement and that standard, we would simply, what? Measure up to and try to be like every other person that we see around us. Whether it be from television, radio, just walking down the street, whether we just saw someone and we go, oh wow, they look so perfect, I want to look like them. Whether our heroes are impossible to be like, no matter what you look at in the world, what you deal with in the world, somehow you are trying to be like the world because you're not trying to be you. You begin to see something interesting here? You're trying to be something you weren't created to be. And God said, I made you unique, distinctive. I made you. But we're not accepting His standard for us. We're not willing to go after His standard that He wants us to have. We're not willing to be the person He wants us to be. How come we want to be something we're not? When God says, just be you and I will accept you. By grace are you saved, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, and you could not and cannot earn it. For it is grace you are saved, and that not of yourself. Lest any man should boast, for he would think that he had earned it, rather than God had given it. Grace is how you're saved. It's because of what Jesus has done.